Welcome to the channel, everybody. I'm Ham Radio Dude, and I'm joined by Pascal, Victor Alpha 2, Papa Victor. Uh, Pascal, thanks for being here. Thanks for inviting me, Sean. Yeah, it's a pleasure. And one of the reasons I really wanted to bring you on was because uh, even though you have a relatively large YouTube channel focused toward Ham Radio, uh, I had no idea that you had a channel, and I can't help but think <laughs> maybe other people don't as well. So I wanted to take maybe 15 or 20 minutes to kind of introduce yourself, tell us uh, how you got started in ham radio, what your channel is about, and uh, some of the other contributions that you make to ham radio. Okay, well, I can talk for hours about that because ham radio is, it's not only part of my life, it's part of, of me. It's defined me and uh, it led me in a career in telecommunication and uh, I even went back to school because of AM radio. So for me, it's something very important. As you, uh, you saw, we, we met in person a few days ago uh, at the Amvention, and that was yeah. nice. And as you, uh, you saw, my wife was with me, so she's been supporting me uh, and very supportive uh, the past 30 years. As I've been at AM since uh, 1991, uh, when I gra graduated from uh, college in business administration. So I have a business degree. Um, I, I met my wife not long after that, and um, uh, I started. I passed my license in 1991, and then uh, became very active. I started giving courses because there was no teacher at, at the time, and I, at some point I was also what you call in the states a VE or delegated examiners here, uh, and I started giving exam and give. I, I did a lot of courses, and I learned a lot doing that. And, um, and later on in life, I went back to school in electronics, so I have two degrees now, and uh, I work in telecom telecommunications since then for the past 25 years. And it's my wife that suggested me to go back to school. You said, you love so much electronic and radio, you should go back and study in that field. And that led me in, uh, well, what I think it's a <laughs> successful career in telecommunication, mixing both technical and administration, so management. And I've been uh, with the same company for the, uh, the past 25 years. So that's why I say, for me, I had a, a lot of gear here that I accumulated over the years, of course. And being older, you know, there's some advantage when you're getting old. <laughs> uh, so I can buy uh, more things than I, than, than I was able to a few years ago. And um, I, I really enjoy AM radio. I enjoy new gears. And that led me into starting a YouTube channel in 2015. And I did some mistakes starting my YouTube channel. And uh, this is a, my advice for someone who wants to start a YouTube channel. There's some of the things you need to know first. So at the time in 2015, like I mentioned, I work for a telecommunication company. And uh, I have a, a full lab and I bought the domain name called laboenling.cine. And that only means online lab. Okay, so it's very simple. It means online lab. And that was for doing um, uh, IP labs and uh, Cisco labs when, when I was getting certified in the, uh, in the 2000, between 2005 and, two, and 2010. And uh, the, this domain was used for that. So in 2014, I went in, uh, to Amfest and I woke up that morning. I want to try something new. So I bought a C4FM uh, HT, uh, Yezu Fusion, uh, little uh, a digital HT at the time. I don't remember which one. I think it was the FTX1 or something like that, uh, 1D. And I bought a mobile, which wore the, the FTM400, and brought that back from the Amphis. And then I noticed I could connect to the internet and bought a wire Xbox, the HRI200. And if you look at the Canadian that are connected, I think there's a section in North America. I, I'm not too far in the first one in the list. At least that was uh, the case at the time. And uh, we started uh, with a few friends to, uh, to link some repeaters. At some point, I had a repeaters in the shack here. And we started to link repeaters. And we decided to make a website using my domain name, laboanling.ca, which means, again, uh, uh, online lab. And this website was in French. But after a point, because we were doing like new stuff, it was quite new in 2013. I was getting a lot of email from people that we don't understand why it's in French only. And I noticed in the stats that 95% of the visitors were not French, not even from France or for any country that speak French. So I switched and made it in English. And then we started to make videos in 
January 2015. The first video was made by one of my friends, Eric V2ML. And um, we, we did a video, I think it's the uh, FT991. That was one of the first and the FT2DR. I, I, I don't remember exactly. I will have to look to, to the channel. And I'm start, I started to make some videos. At first, I didn't film myself, didn't talk, just film. Uh, I did a soldering station uh, videos and I started to like doing that. And I'm, I started to make a lot of videos and started to, to put it online. And at some point, I noticed that my, my viewers were English <laughs> at 95%. So all my video was English from that point. And uh, that's how I built the channel. And in 2016 uh, or the end of 2015, I, I don't remember exactly, I got a hand on the DV4 Mini, which was the first Multimod digital hotspot that you can buy. And I had it like three months before everybody else because we had the C4FM network and we could test the DV4 Mini uh, with that network, which was quite new. So I was one of the first to uh, to do a video on this multimodal hotspot. So I got noticed. I remember, I think I got a thousand views in one day and I was freaking out, you know, ha <laughs> Everybody was writing me. Even at the time, the QST found me on YouTube, um, the DRRL QST magazine, and found my video and asked me to do a review about this unit. Uh, that was very new at the time. That was a, a game changer in the digital hotspot. So I started to do reviews with them as well. And uh, I went on and on and did some videos. The, the way, you know, when you look at the YouTube channel, usually you can see the improvement <laughs> in the videos and in the audios over the time. And uh, I guess that's my case too. And uh, videos and audio be has become another hobby for me. And it's a good medium to talk about M radio, to share our passion, get some new people in, meet some new people. And at the time, my goal was only to try to get to access new technology before as fast as possible because I was eager to learn new stuff. And the um, I thought that the market didn't go fast enough for me. So that was one of the uh, one of the main goal of the channel is trying to access new stuff like I did with the DV4 Mini. And um, uh, and that's it. And then here I am now with 18,000 uh, subscribers. I've been mainly not unactive, but not very active in the past two years for professional reason, COVID, because I work in te telecommunications. I was pretty busy helping companies uh, try to, uh, to to solve their, their remote working and things like that. So, and, um, and uh, that's it. But uh, I'll be back uh, shortly. I got a lot of project to do uh, that I have in my mind, at least that I want to do. I got a lot of gear. I, I did um, bought uh, many gears to do a, a live studio. I did a few live with, with one of my friends. And um, in, I don't remember when we'll, like, we'll have to look at the videos when I started to post a, the same review in French. Because at some point, I remember I was in Dayton and one manufacturer says, hey, you speak French. Why, why you don't do videos in French? And the reason was that I post the French videos, I got like 10 views. I post an English videos, I got like a thousand views. So, and 95% of the viewers were not French. So that's the reason why I, I was not doing French videos. But then I, there, there was a differentiator for me doing French video. And I started to, to do some, uh, some French videos at their request. And uh, suddenly my, uh, there's not a lot of I'm, uh, I'm Radio YouTube related channel in French. And uh, at some point, my, my channel started to grow. And today I post a video and I get as much French view that I get as an en English view. But that was a, uh, the first mistake was using laboanlink.ca as a, a name for the YouTube channel, but that can be changed. The second mistake was uh, doing French videos in the same channel. So <laughs> it's happened often that people write me an email. Hey, why how, what, do you have an English version? People don't see the English version. My subscribers know that I, when I post the videos, most of the time there's a French version. Uh, or an English version, that depends. Sometimes there's only a French interview or only an English interview and I don't translate it. 
but uh, I can but that's see where that, I could see where that would be confusing because uh, you know somebody comes on and they say, well, why is it in French? And and some people don't know mm -hmm. that they can click on videos and and then they can see a list of your videos and maybe then they would see the English version. Um, and so that could be confusing. So I see where you're saying, like maybe it should be two channels at that point. Yeah, but then I, then I will start over with a new channel for the French one. So 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 that is the issue, and um, just having the word out to people to switch the channel, and you know what it is if people don't click on the notification bell, they think you're not doing videos anymore. Sometimes oh. it happens, and and what happens is that uh, they will maybe they if they miss your video when you say to go to your French channel, but maybe I should do it before the channel is getting grow, uh, bigger in the future. So maybe I should do it before. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I guess. I don't think it'd be a bad idea to start early, you know, because if you start <laughs> now in five years, it'll be, you know, growing and it'll be bigger yeah. and it'll grow with this channel. But mm -hmm. if you start in five years, <laughs> you're going to be yeah. more subscribers here. But <laughs> okay. Of course, but, of course. So. And it will be easier to, to have it separated because sometimes I have to explain why there's no French version of the video oh. or why there's no English version of the video. It worked both ways because some, some people in, uh, that, that I did interviews with don't speak English. So there's only a French, uh, but you can activate Google Translate. Uh, oh. into the, the video to have the subtitle. Um, but uh, some English interview were only in English as well. Let's say I, I you know, we, we arranged an interview with you on my channel. Uh, I guess you don't speak French, uh, Sean. No, <laughs> sir. <laughs> so, so, so it would be in English only. So right. it, it will be best to separate it. I, I, I will need to, to think about it. Uh, but I don't think I will remove the, the um, the French video from uh, from my channel and maybe start a new one from scratch and uh, maybe I change the name. Yeah, I would agree with you. Don't don't remove anything from the current one. Just uh, as you continue a new channel, mm -hmm. that's where you start to separate them. Like I mentioned, I did some reviews for the QST uh, yeah. for the past seven years, did like yeah. 20 or 25 reviews. And uh, Mark Wilson, K1RO, retired um, uh, in December, so they asked me if I can give a hand, so I contribute a little bit more to that call, and so I took over his place as a product review editor for the QST. It's still a, it's something, it's part-time, and doing that, so I consider myself a, a contributor. I just contribute a bit more than I, I used to, and uh, but for me, this was major league, <laughs> major league of reviews, <laughs> okay, of product reviews. Absolutely. And, uh, and uh, still learning that process, but it's it's all fun. It's very uh, very fun. So I'm I'm very happy about that. It's a big privilege and an honor to to be working with them because this uh, and being a Canadian, the uh, the ARRL is the um, is the big organization that everyone would like to have in their country. So we we do look up to them, and uh, and it's uh, it's a great honor to to have this uh, privilege to uh, contribute. Yeah. yeah, more in the hobby as well, and bring some change and try to find new things to review. And uh, uh, like the M5 stacks, that, that's how I found you. I got yeah. a suggested video that says, Oh, that looked like the thing I, I review. And I knew because th that was from a French interview we had for the French repeater network. Me and my friend Rabin did the A2NRJ. And, um, and uh, Armel, the, the, the programmer, F4HWN. I just, I'm just, I hope yeah, F4 I, HWN, you got it. And, and he, he showed me, he showed me the uh, the uh, the M5 stack, and he says because he did a dashboard for the repeater network that goes along with their hotspot, which it's a an analog hotspot. It's not digital. Okay, that's how they 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 built their system. So and so you can have the dashboard with the orange pie here. And he says, oh, I did a program for fun, and uh, I programmed the uh, IC705 with the Bluetooth. I can see the, the, the signal. I said, oh, my God. I said, we need to talk after, uh, after the, uh, the interview. And, um, and then I started playing with that, and he, he, he did some change. You, you saw the new version of the, uh, of the uh, multimeter. Yep. And, um, and now he, what he did is he built a Raspberry Pi image that can do a link between a 7300 and a 9700 of icon 
since they don't have Bluetooth, so it, it acts as a bridge, so you can use this with these radio as well. So anyway, that, that was cool. And I knew that no one knew the M5 stack in North America. You're, you're absolutely <laughs> right. And uh, yeah. it wasn't until your article that I picked one up. Now, we're going to kind of go off a little bit here and talk about yeah, yeah. that for just a second, though, because without that article, I never would have learned about the N5 stack. And Armel reached out to me as well. Now, uh, we had spoken. I told him, I told yeah. him that you made a video because people oh, were yeah. contacting him for help. So I said, you should point it out to, uh, to Amradio uh, YouTube channel. Yeah. Y yeah. And he was very grateful. And thank, thank you guys for that as much or as well, rather. If anybody yeah. ever had anything mm -hmm. that they were trying to talk to me about and it just wasn't happening with Google Translate mm -hmm. or something, we could we could easily just oh, contact a, oh, yeah. a middleman now. Mm -hmm. I do think that it's a great idea. And hopefully uh, hopefully there's other people out there too who might be considering, you know, like taking my videos or taking a very popular video and maybe translating it uh, so that so that it helps other people out. Yeah. And uh I think that but would people be... need to know that they can use Google Translate in YouTube, so the subtitle would be translated, uh, and uh, and that is automatic. It's not perfect, but if your you your English is basic, uh, and you do understand a few words, it may clear some of the statement, and, and and that is something, by the way, that I got a comment very often from my viewers. Maybe, well, last time I checked, like fifty percent were from overseas, not even Canada. Okay, of my viewers, so many uh, European um, watch my videos. Now, France taking a big portion of that percentage, but uh, it was not the case before because what they tell me is that their second language is English. Let's say a German or an Italian, and my English is simple. You know, in writing, I can write more complex word, and that's not the same. It's, I'm better in writing than I'm to, when it comes to speak when. But some complex word doesn't come in my mind very easily, so I use simple word to express myself, and um, people say they understand me very well. So, so, so that's that's a, a thing that a comment I got uh, very often in the past because my my English is my second language too. So, and that's a good <laughs> point because uh, in, and we've spoke about this a little bit before too. Uh, when I talk. I talk very fast <laughs> and sometimes not clear and concise. Well, I have no problem understanding you, uh, by the way. So, so uh, it, but, it's got to be a big accent or, you know, uh, <laughs> it, it could so be. I won't understand it. Yeah. But, but that's there, my are, there are yeah. plenty of people who say, hey, uh, mm -hmm. can you slow down? Um, or, hey, could you speak clear? Or I use some kind of slang that they don't necessarily understand. Uh, whereas I understand, you know, you talking nice and clear, concise and slow really will help them out a lot too. And I always tell people that if, uh, if I am talking too fast, you could always hit that button in YouTube that actually slows the video down a little bit. You could <laughs> yeah. like three and you can activate the subtitle too. And the subtitles too. Yeah. That's well, a good one. We need one. to go fast. It needs to be fluid. I watch your video. They are very well built. There's no... You know, there's no, um, how to say that, uh, you don't spoil any time, okay? So, yes, it can be fast if you try to take notes, but but you can rewind, okay? So, this is, mm. it, it's static, it's not live streaming. So, yeah. uh, and it can be rewind, and, and that's what I told people, well, use the rewind or slow it down. You, like that's you mentioned. a good point, too, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah you yeah. could even rewind it, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, I noticed, uh, and you said that you, you know, as you've... Uh, as you aged, you started to be able to collect a little bit more gear. You want to show us what you got there in the background? Uh, oh, I got so many things. I don't know where to start. And I got some new boxes I brought back from Dayton. Oh, <laughs> okay. no. That's all in the garage. So I got a <laughs> new project. So, uh, okay. So let's start with this, Colin, here. So what I have is a VHF, UHF power meter now maybe you can hear the fan a bit of the uh, this is the um, hf amplifier which is one kilowatt the past early 1k i got that at dayton in 2018 really love this amplifier because i have many hf radios it is rf sensing so i don't need any control from the radio to select the band automatically so i just pre-tune uh, without um, uh, without the amplifier in line and it will detect the frequency and that's it. So any radios will work. So I only have a PTT bridge that I built where I connect all my radios 
and that's it. So it PTT the amp and it will detect the RF sensing will do this, the band switching automatically. Just have to make sure it's not in operate mode, but uh, by default, when I turn it on, it's not in operate mode. So uh, then uh, I always uh, make sure I tune that my SWR is okay before getting it back on. So it's been working very well for me. Also, I have the automatic antenna tuner work exactly the same when I send a, a, a 10 or 5 watt uh, CW key down. Well, it will tune automatically the antenna if needed. All my antenna are resonant, but I still like to have an antenna tuner in line to make sure it's always be flat. I'm just, I don't know, perfect sinus. I don't know how to call it. But sometime when you go on the dipole on 80 meters, if I go down the band, so it's not exactly tuned. The, it's not exactly tuned well uh, it's nice to have to have the tuner i got a monitor here connected to uh two of my radios actually the i have the ic705 here <laughs> hey, hey that's awesome uh that yeah. monitor right now is hooked up to a, a yesu is that right the yesu ft dx one yeah it's, it's it's on the ft dx uh 101 it's my latest acquisition in hf that's the well now i have the eighth FT891 that I want to put in my Jeep that's in the garage. I got it at Dayton. So that's the latest HF. But before that, I got this uh, this year is the FT101 DX that I wanted to try. And I really like, actually, I like all my radios. Okay. And they're all different. They all have their strength. And I use them for different application. Okay. So that depends how I feel too. And uh, it just, I think it, it looked nice, but uh, sure. <laughs> so I have the FTDX 101D. I got the IC9700 there. Sorry, it's a bit dark over there because the lighting is made for me. I was just expecting of presenting all my gears. And I got the MB1 here, which is Expert Electronic MB1. This is an SDR with an integrated uh, PC, Windows PC. I got that. I think it's 2000. 17 or 18 or something like that and i did anyway there's a the ic7610 and the um the mb1 is on my youtube channel there's a review in french and in english of course and um, it's actually a pc you can watch it now it's booting so that's a windows 10 pc okay and uh, it's gonna boot into uh, the uh, mb1 software I also have a video on how to use safely multiple HF in one shack so you won't blow it up, blow the receivers when you transmit with one, especially with an amplifier. So I have a specific video on my setup that you can find on my channel. Maybe you can put it on uh, uh, when you do the uh, editing and uh, showing how it works. So what I have is a remote switch for uh, an Ameritron switch, the, R the RCS uh, 8v which i did a review as well that is in my tower out uh, outside and this tower uh and so i'm switching the antenna uh, i only have two ant hf antenna for now i used to have more uh the uh, urban beam which is a step ir urban beam which is a uh, a beam that is adjustable uh, from 6 to 40 meter okay so it's a uh, one element for the dipole dipole on uh, 30 and 40 and on 6 to 20, it's a uh, uh, two-element uh, Yagi. And it's adjustable with the controller that you can see right here. And um, I have a 80-meter inverted V. So that's what I have for HF. And unfortunately, I can only use, or fortunately, I don't know, I can only use one HF radio at the same time. Because outside, I, I switch the antenna with the remote switch. And inside, I switch the radios with an alpha delta switch would provide a lot of isolation between the radios. So there's no other antenna that can bring RF in the shack when I'm transmitting at full power and irradiate in the shack. And there is no way that it can transmit into, whoops, into another uh, HF radio because they are put to ground automatically when not selected, same thing with the antenna outside. So that gives me the opportunity to use any HF I want just by switching. And I in the QSO, sometimes I switch radios. So it happens. Okay. So it's very it's that fast. And the M being RF sensing, so it doesn't matter. Everything is uh, very quick. What I like about the MB1 
is that it's a PC and there is 4, 4K output if I want to, video 4K output. What I can also do, since it has multiple output, uh, I can output the uh, the radio receivers with the HDMI audio if I want. Okay, if I put it on, let me know if you hear it. Maybe it will be loud. I'm not so sure. So can you hear it? I don't hear it. You don't hear it? Okay, hold on. Uh, how do I make sure? Loud. Anyway, I will have to play. <laughs> <laughs> I will not play too much with that because uh, I will have to do some tests before to make sure it works. But I can stream the audio from the HDMI output uh, since I have an HDMI switcher here. So I use a Blackmagic Design um, uh, Mini uh, Extreme uh, HDMI switcher with eight input, two output. And that's what I use uh, for the live studio. That's how I switch my uh, cameras like this. Okay, so I can switch also the radio. And at some point, I want to do live video and doing live QSO with people. I didn't do that yet, but uh, I will. I will uh, at some point. <laughs> that would be re really cool. Really cool. Yeah. And I can also mix the audio with my audio console, which is a roadcaster. We were talking about background noise uh, before you start the recording of this video. And the Shure SM7B, it's a... Uh, Mike, that's been produced since 1973. Michael Jackson recorded Beat It album with this microphone. It has a very, very good attenuation in the back of the microphone. And with this, you don't have to soundproof a room. You get it that close, it sounds good, and it doesn't get background noise. It's a low impedance microphone. It needs a preamp also. It's expensive. And it is fully... Uh, uh, RF shielded. Hold on a second. I'm going to make some noise now. Ow. Okay. So you see, it's all metal inside. And I have one of it, of this microphone, because I have two for the studio when my friends come in. So we have two exact microphone. And I have one connected to my MB1. But I can also connect to other radios if I want to. I got the videos about my shack, but it's not up to date in 2020. This video, when I put it online, got 10,000 views in less than 24 hours. And I think it's maybe more than that. I know it was like at the end of the week, I was up to 40, 50,000 or something like that. It was That's crazy. Phenomenal. Yeah. And I know yeah. people are going to ask, and I, 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 I didn't miss it, I don't think, but is that a Geocron you got on top there? Mm -hmm. Yes, I got the first version and the second version. Uh, so, yes, this is a Geochron. I think it looks so nice. When I was a kid, and I have that in my review of this unit, the first one, the first version. Uh, when I was a kid and I started in Amradio, I wasn't in my early 20s. And I was looking at the QST magazine and the CQ magazine at the time. And I, I, I remember seeing the Geochron mechanical clock. This thing, I don't remember how much it retailed for in the past, but it was a few thousand dollars to have this, okay? And I was wondering, what kind of people buy this to get in the shack? Because my, I didn't even bought my first radio. It was lent to me by a friend that is now a silent key. But it's someone that I, I met, uh, like, um, the first time I met him, he, he lent me a radio. He loaned me a radio, and I started doing two meter with his radio. I didn't even have the money to buy my own radio at the time. So I was just got out of college full of debt. You know what it is? <laughs> and uh, and um, that's how I started. And I was looking at magazine wondering why, how people can afford this thing. And even today, I, I, I can't afford, I could afford uh, a mechanical one, but uh, for me, it will be a big expense, you know, I, I, since I have a lot of radio. But when they got out the digital, version of the geochron uh i got a, i had to get my hand on it and it looks so nice on the 4k tv and for tvs these days are so cheap and uh it, you don't need an oled one with 120 hertz uh, refresh rate like a gamer will need to put a geochron it moves but it moves very slow and it won't damage your tv because it's move all the time but very slowly and it won't mark the TV, so you can get a TV for a few hundred dollars. And I have a 55-inch there. I think I paid 400 Canadian, so that's about 300 
and brand new and i put the zero crown on it it looks very nice and i also have the uh with the new feature of the new version you have the forecast propagation forecast so that's yeah. a that's how i take a quick look to see if there's some opening and uh, i use that a lot yeah that that's nice yeah i like that a lot it's uh it's sharp and you get an idea where the gray line is and like you say you yeah. get solar solar conditions mm -hmm. with the new one uh, which is awesome uh, and, and all my radios are different uh, the 705 is good to to bring it with you it's small i have the backpack sure. and everything so that, that that's what i use for uh mainly and the uh the uh, ic7610 i use it a lot and it has a very very good um uh, noise blinker on, on this radio and um i use it for uh digital because i can use my pc that i have here and it's not even connected to the radio because i use the uh, the audio card uh, driver from the RSBA1 software, mm -hmm. so I can use I can do digital remotely with any computers without connecting to it because it's IP directly. So it has a, a LAN port on it. So I use it for FT8, and um, the MB1 is is uh, is so complete a feature. Uh, it had a full audio rack, so to do some uh, iFi SSB is very good. You see, they are all different. They all have their strength. The FT one hundred and one DX have a very good DNR. Very, yeah. um, it's easy to listen to that radio. A very low noise flows in certain condition. Um, most of the time, there's nothing I can't hear on any of my radio. So if I can hear on one, I can hear on the other. But uh, depending on the situation, I got the uh, the advantage so I can switch. I just love it. You know, peop some people collect cars. I collect radios yeah. when I can when I can, but, uh, and it, you know, what's really nice too, is it sounds like, I mean, it, it shows that you know everything about not not everything, but a lot about all these radios. You take the time and you invest the time to understand the radios and what they do and don't offer. And, um, actually I'm aiming more. I, I have some project. I, uh, I don't want to talk about because I don't want to have the pressure to produce it too fast because I did sure. th this past two year was so crazy that, you know, I did, I oh, will do that, I will do this, and I, I didn't. So I don't want to, I, I prefer to under-promise over-deliver than the, the other way around. And um, But uh, I did invest in um, in, uh, in new gear to, for videos, and uh, I, I want to do, uh, I want to concentrate on higher production, and, uh, and maybe less for product review, because I'm doing a lot with the, the QST. Uh, but um, I will review for sure the, the gear that I have, okay, like I, I, I used to. For me, it's not because when you learn a radio for yourself, you read the manual, doing the video, it's the easy part after you know the radio. But if you do, and you do a lot of product, product reviews, like we've talked about it uh, this weekend, it's good to get known because people are searching for a specific new model of a radio. So if you do a product review, and and the good thing about YouTube, there's no competition because when I want something, I will watch all the videos that I can get, okay? And different approach, different point of view. So I guess our viewers are doing the same and they will subscribe to many YouTube channels. It doesn't cost them anything to subscribe to one or more YouTube channel. So we get all the support. So product review is good for that, but it's also always a run to try to get the thing as fast as possible and in canada we're not the first to be approved <laughs> by our government to for for, for the radios sometimes their radios becomes available like two weeks after uh it's available in the u.s so it's tougher for me to to follow up at some point we were not a lot of voice doing that so it was easier but um and uh, but i would concentrate on i did a documentary in 2017 so uh showing how internet can save uh, some, uh, some arms that were not able to operate anymore because they have to move for personal reason into an apartment instead of a house, especially uh, people getting older. So, and showing how you can control even um, uh, amplifiers, HF amplifiers that are lamp based. Okay, so you can watch that video. It's called the DXer and, uh, and the Technician. Well, you can, and, you can like, look at that. Yeah. And I'll link it below as well. You got to watch that. <laughs> I, definitely, I will. I'll check it out. So, that sounds, that sounds a, amazing. A, it is mostly a story about two friends 
and now they were able to build a remote station for one of them and uh, to share a station. And he did like 300 countries since he, and over since he did that, Michel V. Two of So, so I, that was the kind of story I wanted to tell about Tam Radio. And uh, to remarkable, we have two challenges. Young people can't live without internet. They have their phone like this, and if it doesn't have an IP, it's not. It's it's old technology. Okay, right. so this is Stone Age for them. And at the other end, we had some elder. We have some elders that are against radios over IP because it's it's not AM radio, and you know we have both. This is not good for AM radio for the, our prosperity, and. I don't want to talk alone when I'm retired. I want to have, be very active. And if I talk alone, it, I hope it's a disease. It's not because there's nobody else to talk to. <laughs> because, and uh, this is uh, it's important to bring new people in. And uh, we need to, I'm really always all about technology. So all technology is good. Raspberry Pi, M5 stack, whatever you yeah. can connect. That's, what will attract young people to the hobby. And maybe at some point, someone's coming in your YouTube channel and see the M5 stack video and find it cool and start to work with this. Maybe this person in two years will be doing CW. You don't know. Yeah. And if that happened, I know it happens. People, there's some people that told me that. So that's how we, we need to use YouTube. We need more YouTubers. We need to produce contents. And um, we need to get young people in and attract them with new technology and and my shack is something i wanted to build too i wanted to it to be a showcase a technological snow showcase i'm tired of seeing videos a, a film on you to on whatever platform okay netflix i said netflix uh i saw a, a, a movie uh, that is quite recent but they always shows i'm radio gear that are, up, are outdated. They are back from the 60s. The yeah. film Frequency, that was filmed in, right. in, in the 90s or in the 2000s, and, and they show a, a whole lead kit rig. Man, yep. people yeah. have the idea that I'm radio, it's obsolete, it's old technology. It works all the time, but it's no, it, it has evolved. We have computerized, like this radio, this is a computer, okay? Yeah. It's, you can do a lot of things. Too much because you can scrap it, you know, and your audio and everything. <laughs> but uh, I mean, you can do many things with these radios, and this, the the the, the film industry doesn't reflect the reality about them radio, and that's a shame. That's a shame, and we need we need to make noise and, and change that and see people like, wow, what is that? You know. I agree with you. I, I, I think you're completely on point there because the first thing I thought of was frequency as well. Uh, it's a perfect example. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I think, if anything, the last hour of talking with you today has shown a few things. Uh, again, your passion for radio, but the fact that you do speak clear and concise where most anybody can understand you. Uh, so if you're new in amateur radio, you know, follow Pascal because... Uh, even if you don't understand everything yet, he's going to, he, in his videos, as you watch them, I think you're going to be able to understand these things. And, and again, if you don't understand them, it's always good to ask questions and, and learn and grow. And we kind of grow together. So, uh, Pascal, mm. I want to thank you for coming on today. Uh, you're welcome. Do, do you have it's any final, my final departing words here before uh, we take off today? Well, Am Radio is, uh, is the greatest hobby. Okay, oh. For me, it changed my life. And uh, it, it led me to a, a career, and um, I'm very happy. That's why my wife doesn't complain too much when I buy radio. And um, I did invest a lot in that, but it's, it's invested in me as well. So I got many returns back with Am Radio. It's also a concrete way to test technology. And your skill, if you work in any technical field, will improve if you are into Am Radio. And uh, because you get hands-on experience, and uh, this is very important, and it shows. It shows uh, for people. It's a. It's been a differentiator in the past 25 years for me, when it comes to troubleshooting, when it comes to find complex problem. My approach is based on all the mistake I made in my shack. <laughs> so, hey, uh, yeah. yeah. 
Yep, and, and it shows, and you learn uh, again. You learn as you go, uh, yeah, and the things that you learn can be used in not just radio, mm -hmm. but in everyday uses. Yeah. We're going to use a lot of these skills in in ham mm -hmm. radio that we use in everyday uh, situations, and, and it, vice versa too. It's actually take abstract concepts and bring it to practice. When it's you in an antenna and you talk about impedance, it's something you can practice. You can see and understand the result. Yes. And I'm radio is so fascinating. It's like suddenly someone, I don't know how they discover that. I know how, I know the process, the, how they discover radio's wave. But when you think about it, it's just like, let's say I ask you, do you believe in ghosts? Well, it's about the same thing that will come in mind to people that were born prior to radio. And then this come up, waves are everywhere, but we can't see it. We can only decode it with the, uh, the proper equipment. And it's completely amazing. And people don't realize how radio waves is important in their life in everything we do. I guess they do, but not to the extent as us um, do. And everything is started mainly AMS experimentation are base are the base of many development and technological technological advancement in, in the past hundred years, and we still contribute and and it's magic it's pure magic and, and it's a lot of fun I'm I'm very happy to be living in this time uh, of the human history. Yeah. yeah, I I gotta say the pleasure is all mine today because. Uh, <laughs> uh, you speak with with such passion and, and and just so much energy itself that uh it's motivating but also i think it shows again that you're, you're so knowledgeable so thank you thank you. Or, thank you so much for coming on the show pascal and uh and uh you know i hope to see you again soon i look forward to working with you here in the future yeah, and uh, and like i said if you ever need anything reach out to me but i think i think i'm going to be watching you and i'm going to be learning a lot from you Oh, we'll, we'll work together and, uh, and and continue. You do a great job, uh, Sean. I really like your channel. Thanks for thanks for doing the review on the M5 stack. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, you have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. You too. Thank you. Ciao. All right. Bye. 73.